Hey you, welcome to the video. A bit of a different one today, one that's actually been in the making for the last eight months, only six of which were procrastination. But I wanted to share the process of my seven foot tall Farina painting from building the frame, stretching the canvas, to finally painting. I'm not a master at this and this is not a tutorial. I just want to share what I did, what I wish I did better, and my overall first experience making this huge painting in my shoebox apartment. I'm trying to get better at recording the projects that I work on, so I hope to get more of these types of videos out in the future. If you want to see what else I'm up to, subscribe and leave a comment below letting me know what you want to see me make next. So without further ado, let's get into it. The first thing I had to do was actually research how to build the frame. Since I had never done this before, Saying I was a little nervous was an understatement. There was a lot of time and effort that was gonna go into this project and monetary too. Wasting all of the equipment that I bought was so stressful. So I watched a bunch of videos before and when I went to the store, I ended up buying two by one planks of wood. And despite all of the prep that I did, all the videos that I watched, I ended up going with the cheaper option and bought bulk pieces with a rounded edge. So they weren't plain and they weren't necessarily totally straight, which is not ideal for a canvas frame, but the trip already cost me $80. So we're just gonna have to make do with the cheap option. <laughs> the other option was about eight times more expensive. So if everything goes to shit, at least I'll be on par with my gotcha luck. Actually, it'll be a little bit cheaper than my gotcha. So at least there's that. I attached the pieces together with metal L brackets. I'm not too picky about this since the project was just for fun, but because the planks weren't entirely straight, the whole frame is a little wonky. I bought the canvas on Amazon for 50 bucks and the tools to stretch it were like 15. This was one of the most physically laborious things I've had to do in a while, so it was exhausting. I was sweating a lot. This is actually the part where I was the most nervous, which was stretching the canvas because the videos specified where to stretch it, how much, and like in what order, and just thinking about that made me stressed. But it actually ended up pretty pretty good. I like the way it turned out. The sharp corners would have made it hold a lot easier. So we'll see how it holds up in the next year. I mean, we're basically a year out now and it's held up pretty fine. So no regrets there yet. But now that we have the entire canvas assembled and ready for painting, the canvas was already primed when I bought it so I could just start painting. And if only it was that easy. I know that painting a gradient is not one of my strengths. So getting the background done took like 30 coats of trial and error in various spots. And man, it was a process. Sheesh. I, uh, Hope to never have to do that again, but luckily a lot of it was covered up by Farina. So I'll know, <laughs> I'll know what it looked like. You guys get to see the end result. What luck. I ended up using a projector to trace the outline of the album to circumvent my atrocious drawing skills and end up with this shaky line work to lay down the base coats of Farina's design. I picked this art specifically because of the relatively easy cell shading, thick lines, and of course, adorable subjects. This piece has a lot of big areas of just one solid color. And for a beginner like me, that's just like the icing on the cake. It's just so perfect, just laying down this huge block of one color. From here on out though, the rest of the process is pretty straightforward. The hardest part was the color matching from not only the screen to real life, but it was also hindered by my lack of formal training in color theory. I laid down a really nice looking blue on her jacket and her hat, only to decide a couple days later that it was the wrong shade and I had to totally redo it. Her face was also extremely hard to match. Looking at the album cover, she's like this plaster wall, white as white. It turns out she does have some pigment in her skin. I ended up streaming that day that I painted her face only to redo it like an hour after the stream ended. Even months later, I still don't think that it's dark enough. Who knew that Genshin characters have color in their skin? Wow, you learn something new every day. It wasn't until that I did the line work that this piece really started to pop. Some of the colors actually started looking better, especially the white in her eye, which is still too white, but apparently the eyeballs are a little dirty and a little bloody. Gross. 
even in anime characters, who knew? In the end, I bought a gallon of white paint, 32 ounces of blue, and I have a seven foot tall painting floating around my apartment that I'm still looking for a place to put. I had a really great time painting this and I'd actually be down to give it another go. I just need to find a warehouse to keep all the stuff that I make now. Cause there is so much. A lot of it you guys still don't even see because it is really hard to film while I'm making the stuff. <laughs> even though, even though if you keep up with my shorts, you know that I have what, like five different weapons now that I've printed. So if you guys want to see more of that, as I said, make sure that you subscribe, leave some comments down below, the what you want to see, and I'll try to work on these skills to record the things that I make because there's no shortage of those. But I hope you guys enjoyed seeing this process in the time it took me to gather the motivation to make this video. I 3D printed Navia's signature weapon, Verdict, so keep an eye out for that as well. If you enjoyed it, drop a like, drop a sub, and I'll see you guys later.